Hello everyone and welcome back to the second chess game between Alfred Brody and Howard Stanton in round 1 in the London Chess Tournament from 1851. And if you watch the first game, Howard Stanton simply destroyed his opponent in the first game. At move 15, he checkmated his opponent. So it was clear that Alfred Brody was no match for Stanton. And in the chess game, this time Howard Stanton one of the leading chess players in the world at the time has the black pieces and let's check out how the scheme went on Alfred Brody starts the game with playing c4 the English opening c5 the symmetrical variation d3 e6 e3 d5 c takes on d5 e takes on d5 knight to f3 knight to c6 g3 knight to f6 bishop to g2 bishop to d6 knight to c3 and a6, knight to e2, bishop to g4, a3, castling by Stanton, queen to b3, king to h8, bishop to d2, b5, slowly advancing. Actually, both players, especially Howard Stanton, is playing pretty accurately. Just like in the modern era, a modern type of chess by both players, queen to c2, rook to c8, aligning the rook with the queen, but as you can see, White is looking much more passive. Howard Stanton is active and much more confident. B3, Rook D8. And Brody castled. Well done to Brody. He has managed to survive against Stanton for 50 moves in the first game. He got checkmated at move 15, but now Queen to D7, King to H1. And after this position, things are starting to get little bit nasty for White. After king to h1, we have knight to e5, exchanging the knights, and in this position, believe it or not, but white is lost. Why is this losing for white? Can you see why? Bishop takes on e5, and white is in big trouble. Well, there is double threat. The dark square bishop is attacking the rook, and the light square bishop is attacking the knight. How to defend? Well, Brody thought that he solved the problem with defending both pieces at the same time. But this is not defending anything, this is losing for white. After bishop takes on e5, let's say bishop to c3, then simply this is losing with bishop takes on e2. If capturing back, then bishop takes on c3, and this is losing for white. After bishop takes on e5, if blocking with the knight, then b4, and if moving the knight, then bishop takes rook, so capturing the pawns, and once again, if moving the knight, rook takes queen, I beg your pardon, that is losing the queen and the chess game. So this is all over for white. As you can see, so after knight takes on e5, then bishop takes on e5 and attacking the rook. And Brody once again thought that with this move, he solved the problem. But nothing is further from the truth. What would you do? Well, we have c4. Advancing. And white has to be careful. We have d4, pushing the pawn. What would you do in this position? Well, Howard Stanton captured the knight. Bishop takes on e2. And after rook takes on e2, black played. Bishop takes on d4. And this is losing for white. b4 by Brody. If capturing the bishop, then rook takes on e2. Well, maybe a pawn doesn't seem much, but against Stanton, being a pawn down, is almost losing the game immediately and there is no compensation for white. As you can see, white pieces are also not active. White is very passive and Howard Stanton is dominating the chess game. And let me show you the other moves faster. Both players didn't do anything interesting and Stanton is simplifying the chess game and he pushed the pawn. In this position, we have rook from a to e1. And the idea is that if capturing the pawn, if capturing the queen, then rook takes queen. But Stanton is simply advancing with pushing the pawn. And in this position, our Stanton is slowly intensifying the pressure. After pushing the pawn, queen to a2 and d2. As you can see, Stanton's two past connected pawns is decisive. And white has to be careful. Well, this is losing. Maybe white has to resign. After rook to f1, we have queen to c8. Queen to c2, bishop to d4, e5, f5 by Stanton, bishop to f3, bishop to e3, and king to g2, checking the king, 
and queen to d3, forcing for exchanging the queens. Also threatening to push the pawn if defending the queen, so exchanging the queens and capturing the pawn. But Stanton is not rushing in this position, simply defending the pawn. And a4. c2 by Stanton, finally, the expected move, attacking the rook, capturing the pawn. And then, in this position, Stanton, sacrifice, the exchange, rook takes on b5. Capturing back the rook, and then pushing the pawn, promoting the queen. A chest torture for white. King to g2, of course capturing the queen with the rook is not working, because capturing back. The bishop is defending the queen. And this is losing, once again, for white. After promoting the queen, we have king to g2, a meaningless move. And then defending the queen. Brody is playing the last moves of this chess game, and he simply played rook to a1, a funny move. Threatening rook to a8, check, but black can go back with the queen. So queen to d5, checking the king, king to h3, and g5. Exchanging the pawns, capturing the pawn, and pushing the pawn, advancing. King to g4, and then promoting the queen. Rook takes on d1, rook takes on d1, rook to a6. And queen to e4. And in this position, Alfred Brody resigned. And he was eliminated in this knockout system tournament. A beautiful chess game by Stanton. A very accurate chess game. And let me show you the possible continuation. Well, of course, it is meaningless to show you the possible continuation. But let's say pushing the pawn only for fun. Then capturing the pawn. And sooner or later, rook takes on h4. Another beautiful and instructive chess game from the 1851 tournament. After losing the pawn and after having a passive position, White is losing this chess game and there is no defense against Stanton, a very accurate chess player for his time. Brody had no chance. He lost both games against Stanton and he was eliminated. So I hope to see you next time with the more chess games from this tournament and take care and bye bye.